Saturday night. Not as good as us though, mind you. Even if he's at Rockpool or something like that, he's, you know, not as good as us or at um, Tetsuya's maybe. Obviously a friend of Tasmania or down there at the Key. Or, anyway. Um, thanks Malcolm. Thanks very much. Now, the next part of the night could be a uh, overwhelming success, could be some of the best on stage action you'll ever see or it could be uh, a disaster, but we'll see. Um, I would like to invite to the stage talk about some of the things that Malcolm Turnbull just raised, uh, the Premier of Tasmania, Lara Giddings, the Education Minister and Leader of the Greens, Nick McKim, and the Shadow uh, Minister in this portfolio, and also Education, from the Tasmanian Liberals, Michael Ferguson. Put your hands together. I've done 
Well, I can't count how many press conferences with each of these people, but I've um, never got to talk to them all at the same time. So this is a real treat for me, for you. We'll start with some serious things. I've got mics in their, in their hands. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who sits next to who. <laughs> that was to be expected, I guess. <laughs> and we'll start with some more serious stuff, talk about the NBN, but then I want to hear about their earliest memories of the internet and how they love the internet, because that's, you know, what we, a lot of us here tonight have in common. Uh, looks like Michael Ferguson's growing a moustache from November. Put your hands together. Great charity. You look a bit like Steve Martin from the Pink Panther. Has anyone said that to you? I would like to buy a hamburger. <laughs> Very good. I'll get the Premier to start and respond to the things we have heard from Malcolm Turnbull. You want the MBN rolled out as it was first intended, fibre to the door. Does that um, video give you any more confidence? Well, no. <laughs> but uh, let me say that uh, I was a little disappointed that Malcolm didn't acknowledge the discussions that he and I have had. Uh, he did acknowledge your discussions and I'm pleased to know you've been talking to him because it is, this is such a critical issue. To me, it should be above the politics of it. Now, of course, that's a, an idealistic vision to have, to, for anything to be above politics. but. To me, the, the plan A, the original plan, is what was promised to Tasmania by the Liberal Party and the Labor Party at the last election. And what I'm concerned about in Malcolm's comments is that in blaming Vision Stream, he's really been a little unfair because, in fact, Vision Stream are not allowed to speak out. Under their contracts, they can't give their side of the story. So it makes it very difficult for them and this discussion. But I would hope that we can find a way to deliver what we were promised at the last election. But if we can't, then I certainly hope that we can find a way with this plan B, which is working with Aurora, with their power poles, as part of the infrastructure that will see optic fibre delivered to people's doors. So I'm willing to work with Malcolm Turnbull to deliver that. That will absolutely be faster and cheaper than plan A. But ultimately, first, I think he actually needs to look at Plan A as being what should be delivered. And if not, then we'll work with him. And I hope he works with me. Michael Ferguson, no one is saying that the rollout up until um, the Liberal Party uh, won the election was perfect. It's been just um, topsy-turvy, I guess you could say. But should we have confidence that we're going to get what, what we were promised? Well, it's far from not perfect. It's in large part not happening. Uh, the fact is that Vision Stream employees are the only uh, people who have, who have been working on the project who have had any sense of job security or tenure. I mean, it was the Premier and the Minister of Tasmania here, here, here locally uh, who were involved in the, uh, the celebration when Vision Stream got the contract, and I think the figure was 800 jobs. That was the headline figure in that media release. The fact is that the lion's share of those, uh, those 800 employment positions are not working, they're not being paid, uh, and I have been dealing on a literally daily basis uh, with people who have fallen on hard times because the NBN promise didn't occur uh, for them. A lot of small businesses uh, and subcontractors who in uh, different states of decay and survival. So it's, it's, it's far worse than, you know, uh, not, not perfect. Uh, so when the Premier talks about wanting Plan A, I think uh, that's welcome and I like to hear that. It's certainly the case that the Tasmanian Liberals have strongly supported the NBN uh, as it was promised since 2009, in fact when I first became a candidate. The fact is that there's only one party today that's walking away uh, or suggesting that uh, the contract between NBN and Vision Stream be walked away from, and that's from the Labor Party. Uh, what I want to see is an outcome. I don't want to see brands and hype and uh, broken promises or promises without intent. I want to see outcomes. That's what the Liberal Party wants. And uh, I really do appreciate what I just heard Malcolm repeat. Uh, and it now comes back to making sure we get the best outcome for Tasmanians. Well, why do you say Labor's walked away? Is that the Premier's idea to give Aurora more of the work and less of a vision stream in the pits? Is that right? Well, I'm hearing the Premier talking about a plan B. 
Now, as far as uh, the Premier is concerned, I didn't hear any of this language before the federal election. I didn't hear any admission that Plan A was virtually kaput. Uh, it, you know, we, heard, we only had politics from the Premier. An animated um, facial expression there from the Premier. I'll give her a chance to um, put it into words. Thank you, AJ, because it's just extraordinary to hear what I'm hearing from Michael sitting up here in that respect, because reality is the only party who would walk away and tear up the contracts with Vision Stream are the Federal Liberal Party in that respect, and we don't want them to do that. But even in your comments, it is just simply not true, and Malcolm was wrong too when he said there was nothing happening in Tasmania, which you've repeated. There is still, uh, optic fibre is being rolled out around Tasmania, and we want it to continue to be rolled out. Yes, it is true, there was an asbestos problem in some pits. Now, we believe that the optic fibre should be rolled out to people's homes, as promised, by Malcolm Turnbull before the election, and the only person looking to break that promise is Malcolm Turnbull himself. He is currently trying to find reasons to walk away from that promise. Now, what I have said is it could be a win-win with Plan B, that we get optic fibre to the home and not to the node, because that's what your colleagues want in Canberra, is to the node. Not good enough. Not good enough for today and definitely not good enough for our needs in the future. Nick McKim, I'll bring you in. Not often you're in the middle of an issue, but um, you are literally. And, al and also, um, figuratively here, uh, because uh, you're not real crash hot on the Premier's idea of having Aurora do more of the grunt work. Um, you, you have some qualms with it. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Can I, can I just say, it's not necessarily Aurora doing the work, it's Aurora power poles that can be used. So Vision Stream would continue to roll it out. But Nick McKim, sorry Premier, um, I shouldn't interrupt. Uh, Nick McKim, what should happen next? Well, could I just make a couple of overall comments first, Alex, and I'll, I'm very uh, happy to address what should happen next. I mean, it's actually not right to say uh, that the Greens don't support the Premier's proposal. The point that we were making is that this infrastructure is actually better off underground. Uh, plan A is the best plan, that is fibre to the premises underground, because when you put it on poles, you get reliability issues around things like bushfires and storms, and this sort of infrastructure ideally should be underground. Now, I listened very closely to Malcolm Turnbull, and there was no commitment at all in what he said to put fibre to the premises. It is implicit in what Mr Turnbull said that he is talking, as Lara just said, about fibre to the node, and that leads to real problems in terms of getting uh, data and downloads and uploads from the node to the premises. Now what should happen next is Malcolm Turnbull should commit to fibre to the premises and he should commit to doing it underground. That would be the best possible outcome for this, for this infrastructure in the long term in Tasmania. And finally, uh, Alex, Plan B, or penultimately, Plan B would be a better outcome than no outcome at all. It'd be a much better outcome and that's the point I made. And finally, I just want to say, the reason we're sitting here at all having this debate is because of a, a really, and I'll use the term, politically courageous decision, and I don't mean it in yes minister terms, that former Premier and my old cycling mate David Bartlett made when he was Premier to actually stump up the deposit and take a very significant risk in bidding Tasmania in to be first cab off the rank in terms of the NBN rollout in this country. And David's here tonight and he should be acknowledged for that. <laughs> Before we, before we move on to more um, cordial things, um, Michael Ferguson, are we any chance of seeing the, the rollout of the NBN um, finish up how it was expected, and that's to the, to the home right across, or have the events that have led up to now just made that impossible? Yeah, great question. And uh, I think it has to be said that what I've just listened to uh, from the two my two colleagues on stage here, is, is simply not correct. I didn't hear tonight Malcolm doing anything like what uh, Lara has suggested. What I've heard Malcolm say before the election and since is that they will honour all contracts. Now, it was the case, and it is the case, that we have a contract to roll out NBM to the premise right across Tasmania. I mean, I would love to know from Lara 
if she would be willing to tell this audience when she first became aware of any suggestion that Vision Stream may not be able to deliver on their side of the contract, and if it was the case uh, that the uh, government in Tasmania has known uh, for a long time why they've held it till now to start talking about a plan B. Well, I'll let the Premier answer that. I mean, what, what is the answer? It's an important that? question. Well, uh, it's actually in the ENCO, it's not a state government business, it's actually a federal government business, so I'm not kept up to date as to contractual issues that might be there. But I'm pleased to see you repeat the fact that you say that the contracts are for the entire state. So we should see those contracts honoured, which should. means that it should continue to be rolled out. We should. Which means all three of us should be very happy. And let's hope this we're time in 12 serene. months, when we're back for the ICT Awards, we can celebrate a positive outcome. Beautiful. Well, that's uh, good. I think we are that. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's a, an unusual situation to come up here and, and talk um, about the nuts and bolts and things like that. So I, thank you very much. But I do have some other questions for you. I owned up to um, stealing Matthew Lloyd's identity and talking to girls from California. My mum, if she was here, she would own up to talking to men in America on ICQ. So, you know, good on your mum. Uh, you know, <laughs> young, free and single when the internet came around. Um, she's, she's in Melbourne. She wouldn't have heard that. Um, Nick McKim, what were your first memories of using the internet? Were you on Greenpeace.org or something like that? Or, uh... Oh, my secrets, uh, Alex. Look, my first, funnily enough, my first uh, memories of you using the internet were uh, a little bit like yours, but no, I didn't steal anyone's identity and I wasn't chatting to beach babes uh, in California, but um, sport was uh, my first interest on the internet and um, the Mighty Hawthorne Football Club, so I wouldn't be surprised, I can't exactly recall, but if uh, hawthornefc.com.au wasn't the first site I visited, it would have been uh, pretty close to it. Uh, Michael Ferguson, what did you um, tap into? We well, wouldn't have been Google back then, Alta Vista or no. Yahoo or something like that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, in 1983, uh, I was uh, nine years old and visited my cousin who had just purchased an IBM JX computer. And uh, she was the only person that any of us knew uh, who uh, had a computer that made strange noises and could uh, log in. And it was to Viatel, uh, which I then encouraged my school to pick up, which it did. And a couple of years later, in uh, the mid-80s, mid I would suggest 86 approximately, bought my first modem. So I paid $299 for it, which I'd saved very hard for, uh, and uh, purchased a 2400-board modem, uh, which is, uh, was impressive at the time. And uh, I logged into bulletin board services, so that was my first experience to the, the thing that, the, the dirt road that became the superhighway. Wow, so that's early days, because I was born in 1985, so these words don't mean anything to me. But, um, uh, what was the bulletin, what would you get on the bulletin board? Well, they're gone. Jamie Oliver recipes, or? <laughs> they're gone now. I, hopefully there's a few heritage bulletin board services out there. I hope there are. We used to have to... Was it like teletext on your TV? Not right? quite, not quite. You'd log in on your computer. I, I feel bad saying this to an audience of IT professionals, but Alex, for your benefit, it was the case that we had to roll the computer uh, telephone cable from the computer modem to uh, pull off the, uh, the, the telephone off the wall, plug it in, disrupt the family and uh, uh, stop people from being able to use the phone. And you would dial into a local bulletin board service and be able to communicate with your friends around the world. Yeah, wow. Play games, text games as well. Ooh. Ooh. Premier, um, your first memory of using the internet? Well, I think I gave You grew up in Papua New Guinea, did they have the internet then? No. <laughs> they did have Pac-Man, I remember that. But um, no, we, my first interaction with the internet was in the parliamentary library at Parliament House. And uh, to be honest, I can't even remember what was the first thing was that I looked up. But certainly it was fantastic to be able to have this whole world open up to you in terms of your private interests. And I love film, so for me, I spent a fair bit of time checking out Hollywood movies and what movie stars were up to, as well as, of course, the more serious side of uh, social policy and politics and the rest of it. But uh, it was great fun. And now, what um, do you three uh, waste the most time on, uh, on the internet? Apart from reading my hilarious tweets on this. <laughs> 
Oh, well, I've had a go first. Um, oh, Twitter for me, um, an amazing medium. I mean, I use it for everything from uh, social engagement, constituent engagement, um, the hashtag politics and uh, your hashtag and it has AJ, of course, but um, I also use Twitter as a sort of a media filter, so I follow the media outlets I'm most interested in, and I basically take my news from Twitter these days, so Twitter for me by far. Michael Ferguson, it's hard to engineer a Twitter feed to your side of politics. Mine's, you know, uh, obviously I sit on the fence, but um, mine's well, obviously. Left, yeah, yeah, but yeah, mine, uh, mine always that. feels left wing. Do you get your Twitter feed to feel a little bit more? to your side of politics, or and what else do you use the internet for, Regan? Oh, look, there's no question that the Twitter feed is uh, is not, doesn't have a bias to my side of politics. I'd be very, uh, very quick to admit that. Uh, but I agree with Nick, it's, it is a terrific source of dynamic news. It's, it, it has, though, had its difficulties in that um, uh, it has misled people and they've taken uh, instantaneous and, uh, and news that became trended news uh, that turned out not to be correct. So there's a, obviously there's an element of, uh, of risk attached to it, but I, I use Twitter a lot. I, uh, I observe it more than I, if you like, necessarily uh, direct tweet out into the Twitter sphere. But I think it's a fantastic medium uh, for communicating, and I'd like to see, um, you know, it being able to be used more in terms of providing government with feedback about what's actually occurring within the Tasmanian landscape. I would spend more time probably on Facebook and my own website. Uh, and of course, I get stuck in the drudgery of email. Mm. Premier, what do um, you, and obviously busy because you're the Premier, but um, uh, what do you waste time doing on the internet or use it for mostly? Twitter, definitely Twitter. And uh, I just wish more Tasmanians were involved in it, to be honest, because uh, there doesn't seem to be enough. In fact, I'm a bit worried that half my followers are from interstate. And that's only, like. yeah, so it's great. Or get polled by the MRS, as it seems. <laughs> but, uh, but to me, it is just such a fantastic forum for exchange of ideas, but also to keep a tab on what is happening. And uh, in news, for news services, it's absolutely fantastic. And the other aspect, of course, is you can start to engage with people who otherwise are untouchable, whether it's Lee Sales from 7.30 Report, Premier of the day, the Prime Minister of the day, whoever it might well be, it's just so levelling in that respect. Uh, I mean, I have my people, like I quite like Michael Owen, the uh, ex-footballer from Liverpool. His horse didn't win the World Cup, though. No, no, no it's Brown down, Brown Panther, that's right. But it just gives you a whole mix of things that are uh, of interest to you that are not just politics, because believe it or not, there's more to life than just politics, and Twitter enables you to be part of that in a very busy life. Terrific. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Lara Giddings, Nick McKim and Michael Ferguson. And thank you so much for sharing those things. Terrific. Thanks very much, guys.